Hello all and welcome. My name is Alec Pinkham. I'll be taking us through this session. I'm going to cover our guide to success when assuring good end user experiences when deploying SD-WAN and also after deployment continuously validating performance. So it's not just before deployment, but it's also the ability to get end user experience assurance uh, throughout the entire deployment and utilization process. So to start out, let me state that experience matters, right? Enterprises are kind of always in a state of transformation these days, and, and somewhere in the business, something is changing. IT tends to be at the center of some pretty dramatic change due to a few factors, right? One is how we're changing the way apps are accessed by implementing architectures like SASE or, in this case, technologies like SD-WAN. The other is that we're changing where apps are hosted, right? We're moving internal apps to cloud environments, adopting hybrid architectures, or consuming SaaS and cloud apps from third parties. And so there are a few statistics from Gartner that I found that I wanted to highlight to help tell this story, right? Gartner predicts a 30% increase in enterprises deploying SASE architectures by 2024. Now that's a pretty short time horizon, but it's clear that hybrid work and the pandemic have kind of changed what the edge is when talking about enterprise networks, we typically used to think about the office as the edge, but now the user edge could be one day at home or one day in the office. And so to the business, we need to incorporate ideas for security purposes, um, but all of the technologies, SD-WAN, proxies, firewalls, any of those changes support a fundamental shift in connectivity, right? Which ultimately is gonna impact the digital experiences of users. And adding to that is the number of companies able to shift to an internet only wide area network, which supports the trend we've seen in customer environments where we're replacing MPLS or we're using uh, direct to internet connections. But this last one is the one I wanna highlight. By 2025, 70% of digital business initiatives will require reporting of business metrics on digital experience up from less than 15% today, right? This is still a prediction. But more and more of the enterprises we work with have found that businesses are more willing to listen, and this is, you know, the executive, the leadership teams, when it comes to initiatives around digital end user experiences. Uh, and that's even when you're talking about connectivity, right? It still has an impact on experience and with metrics to back these conversations up, our customers have been able to drive the success of these initiatives and also isolate that performance so that when you're finished with these transformations, the last thing brought in is not the first thing blamed, right? And that's key to this short guide, right? This general approach for how to assure good end user experiences through SD-WAN deployments, right? We're seeing customers run into SD-WAN services. We're accessing cloud and SaaS applications. And as our organizations grow more distributed, you do really want to look at what your key initiatives are for the next 12 to 18 months. And are you considering both the digital experience or the impact on experience as you make those changes? So let me get a little more specific on SD-WAN, right? It's emerged as really a game-changing technology. Now, it's not a new technology. We know that. But the way that it's been implemented, being brought into things like the SASE architecture, right, that mechanism for improving traffic management across either old MPLS links or even, you know, still required MPLS links and internet links, right, this SD-WAN technology is one of the fastest growing segments of the market due to its ability to kind of enable that seamless connectivity to uh, applications and services that are potentially in the cloud or in a data center or just more physically distributed than they were before. And it provides, in some use cases, the opportunity to reduce costs of those communications and of, of that connectivity. Right, according to Gartner, the SD-WAN is expected to have pretty robust growth all the way through 2025, and they're stating, you know, just south of 20% compound annual growth rate. But what's interesting is that traditional branch office routers is the inverse and is actually dropping almost, you know, 15, 16%. And so seeing that shift is a really interesting thing to watch as we discuss SD-WAN as, as we look at the impact of SD-WAN, right? So the main market drivers that we want to look at here is we're changing traffic patterns, right? That's resulting uh, from either an increased use of hybrid cloud, different locations for users, or different locations for apps. And it makes a little bit of the traditional WAN architecture 
uh, obsolete, right? It's not going to replace everything, but it is changing the way that we're delivering business critical services to users. There's also the need to modernize branch office connections, support an increasing number of remote workers in a hybrid environment or a work from anywhere scenario. But it also helps us reduce operational expenditures, increases the network operations automation that we can do, and allows us to redirect traffic from either costly options or options that are no longer sufficient for really uh, delivering the services and the experience that we need for users today. I will say, the flip side of this is that SD-WAN products create more virtual components, more pieces on the network. And so it does make it a little bit more complex to manage, troubleshoot, and triage, right? When you have something like SD-WAN, you are obfuscating a little bit of the actual network paths you're taking. And so with a heavy reliance on things like the internet creates new blind spots that mean that application performance and user experience can be at risk to disruptions. And so we have to be careful of that, right? Most SD-WAN solutions have some level of analytics capability that monitor application or network performance. However, those capabilities may differ between the vendor's offerings. And we're also seeing it in disconnected views. So it's not integrated with your current uh, ticketing systems and your current alarm and alert notification systems. And this explains why the demand is increasing for end user experience metrics and from that end user perspective, instead of just from the network perspective. So there are three main reasons that native kind of SD-WAN monitoring tools are not enough uh, for providing the visibility needed to deliver that good and better service levels to end users. Uh, one of them is gonna be network performance, right? Native SD-WAN tools report some performance metrics. They do it mainly through passive monitoring Right, and that's a portion of the network. It's basically from edge to edge, from SD-WAN box to SD-WAN box, you know, virtual or physical, right? And this is typically reduced this visibility into that kind of that last mile piece. And so it's only where the devices operate. It doesn't provide a lot of valuable insights across carriers or across that overlay. And that reduced visibility and the increased complexity I mentioned earlier brought about by that virtual overlay can actually augment or increase alarm noise, uh, making fault isolation actually a little bit slower or a little bit more costly because it takes longer times to uh, actually troubleshoot and triage incidents. The second component here is user experience, right? SD-WAN tools don't provide an end-to-end -end network testing that helps kind of in those troubleshooting scenarios. Uh, if you're at a remote branch or if you're at a user's home, you're not gonna see this information. Uh, and especially uh, when you're looking at end user impact, specifically in those scenarios I mentioned, right? It becomes more and more essential for network operations to kind of validate independently that the SLAs and kind of the performance that you want is being met in those middle mile sections like the ISP to avoid getting blame for problems because otherwise, you know, when things go down, the, the answer can't be just the SD-WAN isn't working specifically if that's one of the latest things that you've brought into the organization. And the last part here is infrastructure management, right? Native SD-WAN tools can't really provide a single view uh, into multiple network devices, device vendors, uh, and with a consistent user interface across the board. So by adding more vendors, uh, you know, complexity is gonna increase and, and knowing which uh, portal to go into is gonna be a little bit difficult. So that can increase the cost of operations. It can in, it kind of bring in security risks or compliance issues. Um, but that's one thing that we wanna make sure that we're, we're talking about when we're talking about monitoring things like SD-WAN, right? So when should monitoring come into play, right? Our goal is to get IT and network operations to monitor earlier in the SD-WAN transformation. Now, if you've already done a transformation, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna see value from monitoring after the deployment, right? We all know that these are iterative uh, and as we do configuration changes, those can be major changes to the network and the connectivity. And so we can still take use of this approach, um, but by monitoring earlier in the process and providing kind of actionable insight into the application, the network and the user performance, you know, we're able to provide some of the key metrics for success around digital end user experiences. And we're breaking that into kind of three different milestones. So the before is really about baselining application and network performance, right? Before the transformation, 
get an understanding of what the current state is, right? This was interesting in a few organizations where we uncovered some differences between the expectation and the reality, right? Including finding out that while performance in headquarters was good for some users, some branch offices dealt with either far more degradation or issues, but they had kind of learned to tolerate. They've learned that like, oh yeah, performance isn't as great, um, but there's probably nothing they can do about it, right? Next, we're validating changes as we're kind of implementing them as we're changing them in the system, monitoring during a WAN cutover or monitoring when the first policies are put in place in either a pilot phase or as changes are made in the future, right? It allows us to provide that third-party validation to where traffic was flowing, how users were impacted, and if apps were reachable in the kind of end-to-end -end path from user to server, or from user to data center or cloud or wherever it's hosted, and that's done while the rollout is happening, right? While it's in process, right? And then ongoing validation afterwards, continuous monitoring after to start to build a new baseline for application performance that we can then start from the beginning again for the next change. We can do some comparisons before and after and focus on shifting towards a proactive posture where we're starting to see uh, as issues start to happen with like degrading performance before it really use, hits a user, before it impacts a user too badly, and before they create tickets. And so that's really the high level, right? With a little more granularity, Broadcom software offers scalable, uh, comprehensive approaches, right? And this is unified monitoring of multi-vendor SD-WAN. So if you've grown by acquisition or happen to have different SD-WAN vendors in different places, we can cover you no matter what. Uh, with legacy WAN technologies, things like MPLS and all that, we can cover that. The solution that we have can actually extend uh, the kind of SD-WAN controller's native management capabilities by delivering our end-to-end -end visibility into the WAN, into the virtual and physical infrastructure, uh, including those third-party networks, right? The ISP networks and the application service provider networks. One of the few solutions that's integrating both dimensions of network monitoring and digital experience monitoring together, right? We help you validate routing forward and decisions made by the SD-WAN on a continuous basis, right? This solution actually creates uh, and correlates user experience issues with the offending network com component or maybe the carrier provider, right? We deliver health indicators and the dynamic context in our dashboards and our views uh, to allow and kind of minimize the number of clicks that it takes to actually triage and troubleshoot these issue, right? These are innovative monitoring capabilities that where we're, our goal is really to remove the complexity that's inherent in this SD-WAN uh, environment and allowing you to rewind, look what was happening before and after failovers, what the route was as that changes, configuration changes, and how that impacts performance. Um, but we can also show you a little bit of the smoking gun of where things are going wrong, looking at the underlay uh, performance below your SD-WAN. Right, with network teams already stretched thin, we want to make sure that we're allowing and enabling organizations that work with us to use existing experience and processes to take on managing the whole SD-WAN end-to-end -end experience, um, you know, from the user to the far end destination, be that an app, a, you know, a server, a, a different location of the actual company, right? Our unique combination of capabilities really empower the network operations teams with, you know, faster anomaly detection, optimized uh, mean time to resolution, right? That, that whole like bringing down the clicks, uh, making sure it's easy to find issues. Right, and at the end of the day, we're looking to give you a better understanding of where your traffic's going, what applications are running your network, and how users are experiencing your network. If we look at it from a uh, graphical point of view, right, today SD-WAN vendors are kind of measuring and providing visibility at the overlay only, right, from the customer edge, the customer edge in this case, on the branch offices on the left, data center, corporate HQ on the right, Basically, that edge devices and the tunnels is what you're going to see from the SD-WAN provider, and those are going to be passive metrics based on the traffic. But the this edge-to-edge -edge view is missing some crucial parts of the app delivery path that are not only necessary for troubleshooting purposes, but also some common areas that cause tickets. They they cause complaints. They're things like wireless, things like 
uh, SaaS applications and cloud applications. And, and those are kind of the leading drivers of tickets to, uh, for IT to support today. So with, it, with Broadcom Software's experience-driven NetOps, we extend that monitoring beyond the edge and combine you know, passive and active views of overlay and underlay here, remote users, uh, the cloud, you know, the data center. We have kind of the ability to look both at devices and routes and performance along the whole path. Right, and that provides visibility from the end user perspective, right, wherever that user sits, be they in an office or at home or traveling. And instead of the controller only or kind of SD-WAN perspective, we're giving you the entire picture. And that's really the focus of experience-driven NetOps for us and specifically around SD-WAN. We're seeking to validate SD-WAN policies uh, and performance, but that's really to maximize your investments. We wanna make sure that we're providing the ability for you to see performance across the board, uh, regardless of what technology or what SD-WAN vendor you use. And we do this by providing not only a unified view uh, into the site kind of visibility, triage workflows, we are putting isolated end-to-end -end visibility of the network path, underlay, overlay, um, delivery of the application across the environment, across managed or unmanaged networks, right? Internal or external. We give you insights into policy-based performance with major metrics uh, you need to include, uh, you know, things like packet loss, latency, jitter, uh, voice-specific loss versus data-specific loss, right? And we're also going to look at flow-based data uh, as well. So understanding deviation from norm um, behavior, capacity, uh, projections, that whole side of the, the coin, right? Continuous low overhead testing with active testing from the AppNeta product. Uh, and bringing in uh, the full view of network delivery, right? And this testing also auto escalates when we detect an issue based on alert based thresholds. Uh, and that means that when something is identified, we're going to immediately try to collect more data so that by the time you're actually in the in the product trying to find out and troubleshoot what happened, we're, we're gathering that extra data for you to help you identify where this problem is. So with that, let me provide some examples here, right? We have a large UK telecom company traditionally offered managed network services using single vendor technologies, right? However, over the years, right, the team has recognized the need for multi-vendor uh, and, you know, using multiple network vendors typically presents any service provider with a little bit of a challenge in terms of monitoring tools, the lack of a consistent portal for visibility and reporting, uh, you know, specific knowledge that, uh, different IT team members may have to help support different parts of the network, but the network operations team from this uh, uh, telecom company worked with us, um, recognized kind of the many pitfalls of utilizing uh, and managing these multiple monitoring solutions, including a lack of integrations, right? Increased effort, right? Specific people only, uh, the only people who knew how to run a system, time consuming, uh, data correlation. There, there's a bunch of issues here, you know, but I think the the final one for them was actually limited end to end reporting, right? They couldn't understand what was happening at a longer time frame, so they couldn't see issues that uh, you know might provide different levels of performance over time, and they couldn't actually see uh, the roll up of what the impact was to the end user over the course of you know a month or a year, right? With with Broadcom software, right? The company can now do discovery reconciliation of all of their SD-WAN networks, single operational experience, right? We're offering insights into the health and performance of all of their SD-WAN deployments, right? Network operations can now identify when and why route changes occur, right? To validate SLA policies, right? Provide expected results um, from their solution while also appropriately leveraging the various WAN connectivity options from those technologies. Right. We have another example with a customer in the financial world, right? Really realizing $1 million in savings with a large scale Versa SD WAN deployment. And when I say large scale, I mean it a thousand branches, 16,000 interfaces, up to 300,000 tunnels, right? By partnering with Versa, uh, Broadcom Software allowed uh, this com company to essentially see uh, a much smoother delivery of their services to the customer, right? And those cost savings can't be ignored. Right, so globally, our customers will see uh, from this solution, from uh, experience-driven NetOps for SD-WAN, 
a systematic reduction in their operational costs, right? Using Broadcom software, they can remove a lot of time consuming and manual activities. The actual benefit is directly related to the way that they leverage our artificial intelligence, machine learning capabilities, reduce alarm noise, simplify triage, speed up root cause analysis. There are a number of different benefits of just combining this all in one spot. All right, another key business outcome is a reduction in downtime. Right, our solution is really good at eliminating guesswork. Right, we constantly analyze tons of data that customers make informed decisions from. So it's all about performance analytics, anomaly detection, remediation re recommendations, all that kind of stuff. So all of this can drive significant savings just by limiting revenue loss. Right, we all know the cost of downtime can be really large for digital companies. Um, so even if it's only a 10% reduction. You apply that to big costs, then the benefit can be very significant. And you can get more details on this uh, if you wanna check out our business value estimation. Uh, it's an analysis we've done based on customer interactions. Moving on, kind of the network operation teams are running short of op options when it comes to efficiently monitoring edge infrastructures like SD-WAN technology. So, introducing more virtual components, making networks more complex to manage, troubleshoot, triage, all that kind of stuff, right? The heavy reliance on hybrid networks additionally creates blind spots that mean application performance and end user experience are at risk, right? So what we do is we offer a scalable and comprehensive solution, right? That's unified monitoring, multi-vendor SD-WAN, end-to-end -end visibility, into the WAN, virtual physical infrastructure, right? Including third-party networks, only Broadcom software enables that real-time continuous performance validation, right? And that's specifically for SD-WAN in this context, but it leads to improved, you know, economics and service assurance by better understanding the network traffic, right? Better understanding the patterns of performance and how those change over time. One of the things that I wanted to go back to is that that before, during, and after concept. So how do you baseline the performance of business critical applications or services prior to a transformation project like SD-WAN, right? First, you need to measure, right? First, you need to understand what applications are being used by employees across their locations. Um, this can be achieved a few different ways, but one way that we found, uh, you know, due to the age of kind of shadow IT where departments are uh, start using cloud and web apps without consulting IT, uh, is really to use passive traffic monitoring. So understanding what traffic is on the network, layering on deep packet inspection on top of that, application identification, catalog, categorize your apps, right? This can be a good way to understand not only the apps themselves, but also the impact or weight on the network, right? There are two main categories of apps that I've seen in enterprise footprints, right? High severity, low usage apps, right? These are the apps that are critical to someone's day-to-day -day work, that if it fails or they can't connect, then they're stuck. They're they're done for the day, right? This often shows up pretty quickly as IT tickets and are the ones that we recommend having a concrete understanding of where they're hosted, what the different components of the app delivery path are, regardless of where that user is going to sit. The other type is going to be low severity, high usage, right? These are the apps that everyone uses, but employees can kind of weather disruptions, right? This is like email. Right, I tend to put some project planning apps in this um, bucket as well, but essentially this has the largest employee footprint, but they can pause for a few minutes or they can come back when it's when it's down. And these apps rarely go down, especially the cloud versions of these. When they do, it is news, right? That's the big difference here, right? There's also regional impacts. Uh, one of the most complicated things to isolate early on in the process is whether one user complaint is just the tip of the iceberg or actually unique to that user. You know, it takes comprehensive understanding of the networks and the connective tissue, including that SD-WAN environment between the application and a user, right? In this initiative, initial kind of pre-transformation stage, in this case, right, we're talking about the before, it's important to identify some representative regions, groups of users that can be verified during that implementation stage. Um, this could cover specific offices or locations with groups of users uh, in order to do that kind of early active testing. But we also wanna have target goals, right? One of the hardest things to do is quantitatively is around these goals, right? Before the transformations, get an educated guess, right? If you're installing SD-WAN, expect additional latency, but jitter and loss should remain minimal, right? We shouldn't see as much impact there. If you're moving an app to the cloud, ident identify 
if that's going to positively or negatively affect round trip time for users. Maybe it changes depending on the region, right? It could be that replicating an app via cloud providers is better for the majority of users because they're all slightly closer to wherever that instance is. And those are some hard stats you can look at, right? But it's all about expectations. Uh, you know, one of the key metrics I want to talk about in the before state is capacity, right? Achievable end-to-end -end bandwidth of a single connection from user uh, or office to application, right? In this example, actually, a cutover triggered a period of high utilization, uh, high utilized capacity here in the remote user's connections. Uh, unanticipated, but IT can kind of rewind and look at what changed. They can look at that timestamp and understand, you know, I think this case was actually isolated to a specific routing change. Uh, captured, investigated, right? Without knowing what's normal or good, then it's hard to say, you know, what this change could have been. So in this case, it's very obvious to the user when the application connection kind of slows down universally, um, but it's something that IT has to be monitoring beforehand to actually catch, right? So let's talk about during, during a rollout portion, during an, a change in configuration, even during a pilot phase, Right, one consideration we typically start our conversations with is to have customers walk us through how they verify if the current environment will accommodate the transformation. So, you know, what is the impact on the actual environment? It helps us understand what tools are in place and if there's an initiative passed down that must happen or must succeed no matter what, or if it's more about uh, making sure that we're getting better end user experience. So from there, we'll look at how to plan to kind of mitigate that risk if negative end user experiences are a result of the transformation. So we always want to measure experience. Brings me to a little bit of a repeated idea here, idea here, but measure end user experience and user perspective, crucial and kind of quickly identifying if changes were successful. With active monitoring, you don't need to wait for, you know, the day to start. If you're doing these changes overnight, you don't have to wait for, uh, you know, normal hours to resume in order to find out if there's a problem, right? So that immediate, immediate feedback is great. So it relates to having mechanisms for, uh, you know, that active testing. You know, I'm talking mainly about end user experience, not about the bits and bytes of the change here, but waiting for users to be impacted by the change. You run a risk of unintended consequences, lower confidence in IT, or potentially a rollback. And finally here, success reporting. Even in the middle stages, I want you to focus on how you're looking at success, how you're reporting that not only internally to your teams, but externally to other groups in the business, right? We've had IT teams st sending out kind of rollout newsletters, different milestones. Uh, otherwise, the only time the average employee hears from IT is when they have an issue or there's an outage to report, right? Building in success measures and stories. You can alert users to the change uh, if it might affect them, giving them a bit more knowledge if they run into a problem, help you troubleshoot it, right? They ran into a problem, but I also noticed you were making this change today, right? That can be a big one. You know, key metrics for this middle stage, a bit more nebulous as it really does depend on the type of transformation in an SD-WAN environment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at kind of the overall metrics. So in here, uh, I'm going to look at something like AppDex or mean opinion score. Um, those are pretty sensitive metrics, right? They're going to change based on the connectivity and with SD-WAN kind of being in that middle mile, that's going to be a good one to track. Let's talk a little bit about the after. So once we've made that transformation, that change, right? Once it's live, we want to focus on a few new things. One, continuous monitoring, right? Now that we're running in kind of a steady state by continuously testing, we can look at SLA validation. We can look at cloud internet SaaS providers over time. Uh, and allows us to take that proactive stance to start looking for these things by that continuous model, right? I want to talk about the business reporting again. I'm going to repeat it, right? Providing tools for application owners to see the performance of their business critical apps, um, be your eyes and ears of identifying issues that don't align with, you know, outage announcements, things like that. It can be very useful in avoiding tickets because they can check that the app is fine. Maybe it's a single user. Uh, that's the problem, you know, by empowering these application owners in your business, you're enabling them to ensure that an efficient use of current resources and kind of inform future technology investments as well, because you can see the success of this. There's also our MTTI, right? The last piece of advice shouldn't be new to you. A phrase we often use is MTTI, mean time to innocence, crucial just after large transformations where the first thing to get blamed is going to be the last thing that was uh, brought in. So key metric here, this is around a bit more, a bit more than uptime and availability, it's quality, 
right? Not a point in time metric, but over time, how has the service met its SLAs? How is uh, it, you know, performing in the wild with violations? Is it meeting the thresholds or is it breaking them continuously? Right, looking at this by location can also be really helpful to identify if a specific location is actually at fault or having more problems than others. So just to wrap it up, I'll mention some of the other core areas where Broadcom software can help drive value for the enterprise. We talked a little bit about driving success, specifically in the SD-WAN context. This is one of our overarching use cases where we really want to focus on that before, during, and after, understanding the monitoring. It's a constant battle for IT to make sure that we're driving success and proving success of these. Right. Next one is another kind of high-level one. Right, driving enterprise initiatives. This is enhancing end user experience. It's one of the reasons we do go with SD WAN. It's one of the reasons we roll out these changes. Um, but it's key because you know the central part of this is that apps uh, play a huge role in uh, our businesses and you know driving revenue. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're uh, providing good end user experiences to the users. Perhaps an obvious one here, but one I hope that's able to convince you. Uh, with some of the customer stories I told, right? MTTR, MTTI. Let's you know find find ways to isolate the scope of the problem faster, right? One of the things that we always talk about is kind of four core domains, right? There's the office end user environment. There's the last mile ISPs. There's transit networks, and then there's the application service provider environment. We want to be looking at all four of those. And finally, delivering work from anywhere performance visibility. It kind of grew out of the pandemic as hybrid work gained steam. We're seeing it grow. Uh, as a specific piece that we need to be able solving, right? If IT doesn't know where a user is day to day, then being able to see from their perspective what traffic uh, is going over, what route, what different devices, right? Isolate that location or user or app specific problems uh, can be really, really useful. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you're at Onog Fall, physically or virtual, we we have a number of other sessions going on, so uh, please check out your respective physical or virtual booth for more information or even a demo. Thanks again.